there's a man out there who wears a black t-shirt hunting down all the criminals. Dolph Lundgren. No. He has a giant arsenal to seek vengeance for his family. Ooh, Thomas Jane. No. And he's sometimes aided by the worst rough and tumble criminals to take out the criminals. Oh, well, that has to be Ray Wise. Well, no, sort of. Yes, kind of. No, it's actually Frank Castle, the Punisher, because your geek history lesson on the uh, black t shirt wear and hero of the Marvel Universe is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Black T-Shirt Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson and welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled on the podcast where we take one character construct or avenging force from popular culture and tell you everything that you could ever need to know about them. That's right. This week we are covering the Punisher, Frank Castle, uh, because he's about to appear in season two of Daredevil on Netflix. So, you know, hop stream up those Netflix, turn in those VHS <laughs> Netflix tapes, and you're going to see uh, John Berthenol as, uh, I think that's how you say his name, Berthenol. Berthenol. Berthenol, there you go, uh, as the Punisher. Now, uh, fun fact, this lesson was actually requested by a couple of our listeners. Ooh. It's an old request uh, by Jonathan Stomas and Bob Zanub. They are the two teaching assistants for this lesson on the Punisher. Look, Johnny and Bobby. Yes. So let's move on into the first section of our podcast, the Ten Cent Origin. Yes, the Ten Cent Origin is where we give you all the basic creators, constructs, and uh, alter egos of this person who we're about to talk about. Now, the Punisher, Frank Castle, and the reason why I keep saying Frank Castle is because there have been other Punishers. So I didn't know that. Well, I'm the, learning stuff already. Lo- lots of alternate universe. There's the Punisher mm. 2099. Frank Castle is, for my money, the Punisher, but other people have taken the moniker. Cool, so cool, cool. if I keep saying Frank Castle, that's the reason why. Just it's so that by the end of the lesson, we'll all know his name. I got just it. For, no, I'm not saying that we'll ever do a geek history lesson on another Punisher. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I mean, you know, sure, I would love to do a Punisher 299, 2099, but. You know, that's ways down the road. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Tencent origin of Punisher Frank Castle. Of course, he's published by Marvel Comics. His first appearance was in The Amazing Spider-Man number 129, February 1974. Now, this is a very famous cover. It has yellow in the background, and you see um, there's a scope, Mm -hmm. and you see Spider-Man in the scope, and then Punisher is in a full figure with his rifle pointed at him. Yeah, that would have been one to have bought five years ago. Oh, man, right? (laughs) Uh, He was created by Jerry Conway and John Romita Sr., and his full name name is Frank Castle. He was actually born, and I'm going to mispronounce this name, so forgive me, Francis Castiglione? Castiglione. It's a C-A-S-T-I-G-L-I-O-N-E. Castiglione, yeah. Castiglione? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to mispronounce We're not Italian. Okay. Disclaimer, disclaimer. His, t- his team affiliations have been the United States Marine Corps, a very good team, yes. Marvel Knights. <laughs> Arguably one of the yep. best. The Marvel Knights, Code Red, Heroes for Hire, Secret Defenders, and the Thunderbolts. The, the, your favorite. Uh, th- that wasn't my favorite team. I know, but you love the Thunderbolts. I do love the Thunderbolts. <laughs> uh, his notable aliases have been Mr. Smith. That's a great alias. <laughs> Charles Fort, Frank Rook. And Johnny Tower. I really want a scene in a movie or something where he's chasing after someone and he's just going, Mr. Anderson. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, His abilities are he's an expert in military and guerrilla tactics, marksmanship, close quarter combat, infiltration, demolitions, basically any army training. And he does have army special forces training. Oh, that's hardcore. So there you go. Uh, now we move on into the meet cute lesson. Ashley, what is the meet cute? Well, the meet cute is a phrase that we stole from romantic comedy writing where we tell you the first time we met this character and how cute it was. So, Ashley, where did you first encounter the Punisher? Um, I don't know because I've never seen a Punisher movie and I've never read a Punisher comic. So. But you've had to read a comic where the Punisher was in it, right? Yeah, like in some of the larger Marvel events, but okay. I, I can't. Because he was in Civil War. He was in Civil War. Mm -hmm. I can't specifically tell you the time where I was like, oh, that's the Punisher. But I knew uh, when I was quite young, I had a friend and I can remember him holding it in his tiny little child hand. He had a a huge Punisher action figure. Oh, really? Um, So I feel like he's probably the one who I learned that like like, this guy with the black T-shirt is called the Punisher. Like oversized? I mean, we were six, so oh, it was okay. probably normal size, but, you know, yeah, yeah. he, he, he was big small. To you. Yes. Got it. <laughs> um, How about you? Where did you first meet Frank Castle Punisher? Well, I'm kind of the same way because I kind of feel that I 
have seen him, but mm-hmm. I didn't know who he was because he's so iconic. But I do remember the first time reading a Punisher comic book, and it was actually an issue of What If. Now, Interesting. If, you, if you don't know what What If is, What If is basically an anthology series from Marvel that always poses the question, and it's always like, what if Spider-Man didn't get bit by the spider? What if Doctor Doom joined the Fantastic Four? It's always that type of stuff. And the world usually ends. Yep. And so I actually picked this one up because what if number 58 was, what if the Punisher had killed Spider-Man? And it has the, uh, a duplication of the cover uh, from the original appearance mm-hmm. with the yellow cover and the scope, except in the scope, Spider-Man was being shot. <laughs> that's Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. Friends, um, that's pretty dark. <laughs> but in, the, in that storyline, the reason why I'll tell it, it, it goes to the first appearance of the Punisher. Mm-hmm. And the Punisher is hired, of course, to to hunt down Spider-Man. And he actually kills Spider-Man. And he, he pulls off the kids, he pulls off Spider-Man's mask. And Frank Castle is so... Um, aghast I would say when he realizes that it's a teenage kid yeah because that, that's his one of his big tenets yeah. is that he doesn't hurt kids and 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 so he goes after the villains that sent him after Spider-Man with a vengeance and just basically like kills every corrupt cop in New York and I remember the time I was like damn this is a strong story like I, I, I in his character that was the first time I remember reading the Punisher but I didn't really care about the character mm-hmm. of the Punisher until the Welcome Back Frank miniseries by Garth Ennis and that's where I got a real appreciation for the character. And we're going to talk about that storyline later. Cool. That has a lot of really good covers, I know. Yes. Steve Dillon was the artist. Now well, surprising no one. <laughs> now let's move into History 101. The main meat of the lesson where we are going to dive headfirst into the Punisher War yes. Zone. Now, the Punisher was... That's a, a spinoff series of the Punisher? Yep. The Punisher was conceived by Jerry Conway, the writer of The Amazing Spider-Man at the time, who helped design the character's distinctive costume. I'm going to give you a little bit of the publication history before we go talk to fictional history. Please. Um, now, as Jerry Conway recalled in 2002, and I quote, In the 1970s, when I was writing comics at DC and Marvel, I made it a practice to sketch my own ideas for costumes of new characters, heroes, and villains, which I then offered to the artists as crude suggestions, representing the image that I had in mind, and I had done that with the Punisher at Marvel. Now, Conway had actually drawn a character with a small death's head skull on one breast. And Marvel art director John Romita Sr., he took the basic design and he blew the skull up to cover the entire chest. And then Amazing Spider-Man penciler Ross Andrew at the time, mm-hmm. he was actually the first character to draw the character for publication. Interesting. I uh, also like how uh, how Mr. Conway is just like, hey, hey, hey. I was working at Marvel and DC. Yeah, yeah. Humble brag. <laughs> uh, now, Stan Lee, who was Marvel editor-in-chief at the time, he was asked about uh, the Punisher's origin in 2005. And uh, this is what um, Stan Lee said. Okay. <laughs> Take this with a grain of salt, then. Uh, Jerry Conway was writing a script. Should I do it? Is Stan Lee's voice? Yes, you should. <laughs> Jerry Conway was writing a script, and he wanted a character that would turn out to be a hero later on. He came up with the name The Assassin. I mentioned that I didn't think we would ever have a comic book where the hero would be called The Assassin. But there's just too much of a negative connotation to that word. And I remember that some time ago, I had a relatively unimportant character, who was actually one of Galactus's robots, that I had called uh, The Punisher. And it seemed to me that that was a good enough name for the character that Jerry wanted to write. So I said to Jerry, why not call him The Punisher? And since I was the editor, Jerry said, okay. Excelsior! <laughs> There you go. Listeners, you can't see this, but Jason does a fantastic head bobble every time he does a Stanley impersonation. <laughs> now, uh, the character of the Punisher was a hit with readers, and he started to appear on a regular basis, teaming up with both Spider-Man and other heroes such as Captain America and Nightcrawler throughout the 1970s. Wait, wait, wait. Captain America and Nightcrawler? He's, he's, I couldn't think of two Marvel characters I'd team them up with less than Captain America well, and he, Nightcrawler. he started guest starring with everybody. Um, <laughs> Jerry Conway actually said that the Punisher's popularity took him by surprise as he only intended the Punisher to ever be a second tire uh, uh, supporting character. Interesting. Yeah. It's it's fascinating sometimes what people really attach to. And I think... Um, I think it's a costume. Well, it's, see, I was going to bring that up because you've mentioned a couple times his iconic look, the costume. It's basically just a t-shirt and jeans. And uh, Superman had that look too. Well, back no, <laughs> back back then, it was he was he was actually in a full superhero costume with the long black sleeves. Oh, and you're long, right. They didn't, the t-shirt didn't show up till the mid 2000s. Oh, my bad, my bad. So there you go. All right, now t- now to his fictional history, please. Uh, he Frank Castle was born in Queens, New York, to parents of Sicilian ancestry. 
And his real name is actually Francis Castiglione. 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 Okay. Uh, we're probably going to stop saying that, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> he joined the United States Marine Corps, eventually rising to the rank of captain. Mm. And he married his wife, Maria, who at the time when they married was already pregnant with their first child. That's the most Italian girl name, too. Yes. Like, of course she's called Maria. Mm-hmm. Now, during his time in the United States Marine Corps, uh, of course, he had infantry training and all kinds of training. And uh, fun fact, while he was still training, uh, Frank met this uh, American Indian scout named Big Hawk and he was assigned to be Frank's guide and it was through him that this Indian scout taught him how to survive through the wilderness and how to survive with nothing. Interesting. So that's that's where Frank got this that skill. Uh, following his training of course uh, Frank served in the Vietnam War and in a special operations unit as a point man and he fought in numerous engagements and was the only survivor from both sides of the Viet Cong and the mil- United States military of the Valley Forge Firebase assault in 1971. Wow. Now, we got some real life history going on. Yes. Now this battle is the subject and the climax of the Max mini series Punisher Born. Ashley, mm-hmm. before we talk about Punisher Born, what is Marvel Max? Marvel Max is this line that Marvel had um, that also brought us such characters as Jessica Jones, uh, where they were trying to do a more... In the 2000s. Yep. In the 2000s. A more... I didn't know if it was the late 90s or the early 2000s. Um, where they were trying to do kind of more hardcore, more adult storytelling as before the Ultimate Universe existed. No, um, it was during the same time as the Ultimate oh, Universe. Oh, was it? Yes. Well, then there you go. It's a step up from the Ultimate Universe. Um, it's basically their rated R imprint. Yeah. And it was incredibly successful at the time because it was the first time Marvel had ever done, ever like done it to this degree. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, starting in the 80s, of course, everything starts getting more hard. Hardcore. But I didn't realize it was running um, tandem to the Ultimate Universe. Yep. I'm learning so much. Almost started the same year. Wow. So the Max series, of course, is basically where characters can bleed. It's basically the rated R comic books. It's the sexy comic books. You don't give them to your kids, basically. Now, Punisher Born it was this four issue miniseries by Garth Ennis, mm-hmm. uh, by Punisher Max, uh, um, in the Max line. And it is sort of a retcon of okay. the Punisher's origin. But I actually love it. Okay. It's a little weird. So I'm going to tell you about it because in the fictional history of Frank Castle, this is where that miniseries takes place. Okay. Now, Valley Forge is an outpost in Vietnam on its last legs. Half of its Marines are addicted to heroin and its commanding officer is a straight out alcoholic. Now, that sounds promising. We're introduced (laughs) to this character called Goodwin and he's our viewpoint character. And he simply wants to return home safely. And he quickly figures out that to do that, he needs to stick close to this one guy, Frank Castle, who's at the same outpost. Okay. Um, Now, Castle, despite being at home in the jungle, maintains an internal dialogue with a voice that continually goads Castle into justifying his endless thirst for bloody combat. Oh, interesting. So there are these black caption boxes that are constantly like, yeah. Do it. They deserve to die. They deserve to do this. Like the devil on the shoulder kind of thing? Yes, exactly like the devil on the shoulder. So you're, and you're not quite certain who these caption boxes are, right? Um, now, Castle receives the news that Valley Forge is ordered to be abandoned because there is increasing opposition okay. to the war at the home front. And uh, Castle during the story is displayed as ruthless. First, he tricks a visiting general into wandering into sniper fire for threatening to close down the base. Then he drowns. <laughs> then he drowns a member of his platoon who raped a female Viet Cong member. Um, and he's not discharged. <laughs> and he's not discharged. And Castle himself killed the sniper uh, 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 while she was being raped. Wow. Okay. Uh, another character grimly fre- reflects that his action was the only way that she could have been helped as she would have never survived c- captivity. Mm-hmm. So again, this is a very brutal. Very dark. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, despite the news that the Valley Fort is going to be closed, Castle continues leading a squad on routine patrols, though his men are, keep getting killed by ambushes by the Viet Cong. And on the fourth day, the attrition has left the outpost severely undermanned and outgunned. And when night falls... There is a hellish downpour of Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese army. They attack all at the same time. And one by one, every member of Castle's unit drops. And he finds himself surrounded, running out of ammunition, and the only one alive. Wow. Uh, The only one of the army alive. Uh, But soon, the black caption box voices in his head become louder and louder until it can be heard as uh, sort of a scream over the gunshots. Mm Mm-hmm. 
and it offers Castle the strength and the stamina needed to survive to be able to maintain this internal state of vigilance and to wage a permanent war, but at a price. Okay. And Castle agrees. Okay. To this voice. So he makes the pact with the devil. He makes. He goes under the crossroads yep. in Georgia. By the next morning, <laughs> uh, air support arrives, and they are horrified to find Frank Castle standing in a field of hundreds of Viet Cong bodies. I knew he was going to get a scene like in The Patriot, <laughs> where yeah, yeah. he takes down everyone. Um, he's bleeding from several gunshot wounds, but he seems unaffected. Um, the final scene of the book, mm-hmm. Frank Castle returns home. He's a decorated officer on a crutch, and he finds his waiting wife and his children. In the midst of the smiling return, we see the internal caption voice box speaking again, mm-hmm. and it says, don't forget your price, Frank. But you don't know what the price is. And it just ends. Wow. That's so, so ominous. Now, I love this series. Now, it it got a lot of uh, flack because people are like, oh, I don't like that the... Because you can interpret that voice as anything. Is yeah. it an eternal monologue? Is it the devil? A lot of people I, uh, had some flack against this because it's sort of Garth Ennis, I guess, sort of saying that the... The devil was the responsible for the Punisher's creation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of dig it. I would also say that don't take the criticism terribly harshly from an outsider view because all the Max series came under a lot of criticism yeah, just true. for as far as they went with the storytelling. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's jump out of Punisher Born. So there okay. You go. All right, so Frank Castle for heroes, heroism, her- heroism. Can't say that word. In the line of duty, he was decorated with the Medal of Honor, Ooh. the Navy Cross. Ooh. He got the Silver Star three times. And, and no he, big deal. And he got three bronze stars. He had the Purple Heart four times, and he got the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Wow! Highly decorated. He's got a lot of hardware. Yep. After finishing his second tour of duty in Vietnam, he came back to the United States and had a second child with his wife. Um, he then signed up for a third tour, which is actually illegal under the United States Marine Corps. But he changed his name to from Frank Castiglione to Frank Castle. In order to get past the paperwork, that'll trick him, Frank Castle. And then he, uh, so Frank Castle served a total of four war, four years in the Vietnam War, from 1968 to 1971. Wow. So now to the event that makes the Punisher. Okay. All right. So he's back in the United States. Vietnam War is over. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's on leave from his military base, and then he takes his wife and his two small children to Central Park in New York City. Central Park is lovely. Yep. Uh, accidentally, the family happens upon the scene of a mob killing on the Sheep's Meadow Green. Oh, yep. the cheap smell is so nice. I know. Isn't that weird that the West where the mob would kill somebody? I think it's, um, I, I kind of understand it, understand it from a, a storytelling perspective because Sheep's Meadow is a very family friendly kind mm-hmm. of area. You usually see a lot of kids there. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to, if you know what happens next, I think that it's kind of an interesting, yep. an interesting location. Fearing witnesses, the mobsters murdered Castle's family in cold blood and escaped. And Castle managed to survive the attack, but was deeply traumatized by the incident. He was going to testify in court to identify the shooters, but Castle was denied this since the New York Police Department was actually corrupt and deeply connected with the mafia. And because of this event, he went AWOL and did not return to Marine duty. Oh, oh. Bad move. Frank Castle vowed to spend the rest of his life avenging them. And because he was trained as a Marine and was state-of-the-art weapons, he decided to wage a one-man war against crime as the Punisher. Dun, dun, dun. Now, the Punisher used his combat experience um, in, in guerrilla warfare, assa- assassinations, hit and runs, bombings, all this stuff like that, uh, basically to fight crime. And he fought, fought virtually every known criminal organization, including the Italian mafia, <laughs> mafia, the Russian mafia, the Yakuza, the Colombian and Mexican drug cartels, the Chinese triads, Jamaican yardies, the Aryan Brotherhood, the Irish mob, biker gangs, street gangs, gun running militias, muggers, killers, rapists, psychopaths, sadists, pedophiles, and corrupt cops. So basically the mafia and all their friends. <laughs> <laughs> but all the mafia. Basically, if you're bad, you're bad. <laughs> I think it's, it's so interesting that, I mean, of course, you're building up this character with a history that serves the purpose, but like, what if he'd been a game designer? You know, like, what would he have done after that? Then he that? becomes the dice master. <laughs> he builds a giant game of D anD D and throws everybody into it. And he's like, survive. Face my dodecahedron. <laughs> 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 All right, now we're going to talk about the Punisher's first comic appearance chronologically. The Amazing Spider-Man number one twenty nine in February of nineteen seventy four. Okay. Now the Punisher was initially an, anta- an antagonist, and J Jonah Jameson 
described him as the most newsworthy thing to happen in New York since Boss Tweed. Bring me pictures of the Punisher. In this appearance, the Punisher is determined to kill Spider-Man, who is wanted at the time for the apparent murder of Norman Osborn. This is shortly after the Gwen Stacy death and all yes, that rigmarole. Yes, because I, I believe she dies in 121. Mm-hmm. All, all he reveals about himself in that issue is that he's a former U.S. Marine. Uh, he has a fierce temper. And he shows signs of considerable frustration over his self-appointed role of killer vigilante. And he is outraged when his then associate, the Jackal, who is a Spider-Man villain, mm-hmm. who the villain who created the Clone Saga. Uh, Yay! When the Jackal apparently kills Spider-Man by treacherous means rather than honorable combat. Um, and so uh, the Punisher is really mad about that and goes after the Jackal then. Uh, Spider-Man, who is funny because Spider-Man's kind of the depressed character. He's always got problems. He actually concludes that the Punisher's hey, problems. Hey, he's, he's poor. Whatever. <laughs> Let me finish. The Spider-Man actually concludes that the Punisher's problems and frustrations make his own seem like a birthday party. Interesting. Yeah. So then the Punisher began to team up with various other allies in the Marvel Universe mm. because he was a popular character. Uh, and the Punisher also assaulted such criminal business enterprises as drugs, weapons, and human trafficking. Uh, he fought organized crime long enough to, to figure out their modus operandi and be able to predict their actions. Nice. Uh, many of these organizations tried to kill the Punisher, uh, but the Punisher managed to kill almost every type of assis- assassin, hitman, bounty hunter, and mercenary that they sent after him because he was so badass. Well, who's going to punish the Punisher? It's right That's there right. in the name. Now, yeah, actually, the uh, unlike a lot of other heroes, the Punisher is highly mobile, and he has had many bases of operation, and he actually goes outside of New York City, unlike other Marvel superheroes. Well, uh, I think that makes sense, because based on the people I know who've been in the military, I don't think he's got a lot of possessions. No, no he's got a van, and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, he's been in many places in the U.S. and around the globe, such as the British Isles, Latin America, Europe, and Russia. Um, and the Punisher actually has an extensive criminal record due to his activities. Law enforcement, <laughs> law enforcement such as the police, the FBI, the CIA, and even S.H.I.E.L.D. are aware of his existence, and have actually made very many attempts to capture him. However... Many rank and file officers are actually reluctant to take action against the Punisher because, you know, while they disapprove of his methods fighting crime, they actually kind of believe that him killing all these people make the world a better place. Well, up to a point, they probably view that as effective. Mm -hmm. Now, the Punisher doesn't give a damn what the police or the public thinks about him. (laughs) And the Punisher actually has no problem killing cops if he finds out they're corrupt. Oh, really? Yes. And actually, the fun fact, the Punisher has actually been caught and imprisoned in Rikers Island many times. And he has escaped many times. Um, also, fun fact, in the um, the Spider-Gwen ongoing series, Frank Castle is a corrupt cop. Oh, that's cool. So, just that's cool. a little Easter egg for you. Um, you know, uh, speaking of the, the prison thing, um, I won't mention this storyline, but there is a Daredevil storyline where Matt Murdock gets sent to prison. Mm-hmm. And um, the person that he hires to get him out of prison is the Punisher. Oh, that's cool. So the Punisher intentionally lets himself get arrested by the police to get sent to Rikers, Mm -hmm. and Matt uses the Punisher as his breakout, get out of jail free card. Season three, I'm calling it right now. Season three, (laughs) breakout of Rikers. Netflix, you can call me anytime, I'll write it for you. (laughs) Now, uh, as I said, the Punisher got very popular, but he got extremely popular in the early 90s, and it got to the point- I wonder why. (laughs) It got to the point, it's just like the Deadpool is now, like Mm -hmm. it was Punisher fever. Uh, He got a miniseries, then he got a regular title called The Punisher that ran for 104 issues. Did it really? Yes. And it also... Wow. No. Here's the craziest part. The Punisher, the Punisher, that title, got 104 issues. And that sold so well that Marvel spun off the Punisher into two additional ongoing series. The Punisher War Journal and the Punisher War Zone. So there was one time when three Punisher series were being published at the same time. What a what a world we live in. Because <laughs> yep. Punisher Warzone ran for 80 issues and Punisher Warzone ran for 41. Stop it. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's that's really impressive. Yeah. <laughs> now, during this era, the Punisher was assisted by his then partner, Microchip. Uh, Microchip is basically kind of a fatter version of Q from James Bond. OK. <laughs> and he would supply the Punisher with high tech vehicles and equipment such as armored combat vans. Yeah. Yeah. They were built and cu- customized, of course, to the Punisher's war on crime. Uh, but due to the Punisher's homicidal nature, <laughs> Few of his foes became retur- recurring an- antagonists. You can because he killed them. Uh, the only one he really has actually is Jigsaw. 
Jigsaw is a mobster who kind of has a, a scarred up face, kind of like Two Face. Oh yeah, his face yeah, put yeah. Together. Yeah, he's playing by Dominic West in uh, Punisher Warzone. Your doctor. Yes, yes. Uh, now the Punisher also acquired a nemesis in the form of Kingpin, the uh, longtime Spider-Man and Daredevil foe. Uh, and also, uh, he actually has developed a long-standing um, rivalry with Daredevil, who does not mm-hmm. like the Punisher's methods. Um, now, villains like the Jackal, Bushwhacker, Doctor Doom, and Bullseye... I'm sorry, Bushwhacker? Bushwhacker, yes. Also, <laughs> also fought against uh, the Punisher. And also, heroes like Spider-Man, Captain America, Daredevil, Ghost Rider, the Hulk, Wolverine, Nick Fury, and Moon Knight have also had stories where they've tried to capture the Punisher. Ooh, I should I should track down that Moon Knight one. I bet that'd be cool. Well, often the hero stories are used as a commentary to provide a difference between the hero and the Punisher. Where mm-hmm. They're just like, Frank, there's a better way. And he's like, no, there's not. I don't know why I went Batman. My Frank's going to be down here. Yeah? Yeah. Screw you. I'm going to shoot somebody. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that as the choice. Let's go. Got to be a little more Southern, though, for... Uh... Mr. John Brenthal. <laughs> well, my. <laughs> Hand me over some sweet tea. I'm going to kill me some criminals. I'd watch the hell out of that version of The Punisher. <laughs> Polite, but deadly. I say, I say, I say, I must shoot him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, since The Punisher's popularity was so great, he also started having some really, really strange comic crossovers during the early 90s. Oh my god, I'm so ready. Uh, well, The Punisher, during one issue, went to a town called Riverdale and crossed over I've read with that. Archie. I've read that. Archie meets The Punisher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's worth tracking down. Yep. <laughs> he crossed over with uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne Batman, and Azrael Batman. Ooh, as bad. And even crossed over with RoboCop. Wait. <laughs> Just go with it. He crossed over with RoboCop. Wait. <laughs> now, but the sad thing about it is, is that all these crossovers weren't enough to save him. In 19... <laughs> true. In 1995, Marvel canceled all three ongoing Punisher series due to poor sales. Aww. And the publisher attempted to relaunch the singular title almost immediately with a new ongoing series called Punisher. Under the Marvel Edge imprint was supposed to be like their edgy stuff. Yeah. Marvel Nights before it was cool. God, the 90s was the best. Uh, It was written by John Ostrander. uh, And and during this, the Punisher willingly joined and became the boss of an organized crime crime family and later confronted the X-Men and Nick Fury. Now, the Nick Fury part of this. Should sound familiar to you if you have listened to our Nick Fury geek history lesson. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you the story anyway. The Punisher (laughs) became convinced that Nick Fury, the white Nick Fury from the Marvel Universe with Mm -hmm. one eye, he killed that Nick Fury killed his family. Now, the time Punisher, of course, 90s was mind controlled and by some folks who were trying to get Nick Fury out of the way so that they could take over shield. Sure. So eventually Frank Castle killed Nick Fury. He shot him in the back in front of Daredevil. And this was when Daredevil was wearing his weird 90s black costume. And Frank Castle was sent to prison uh, for the murder of Nick Fury. But again, if you remember our geek history lesson on Nick Fury, they later found out that that Nick Fury that he killed was actually a life model decoy and Mm -hmm. the real Nick Fury was okay. Um, And then the Punisher went quiet for a year and was relaunched a year later into a Marvel Knights miniseries. Now, Ashley, can you explain... Marvel Knights. Um, Marvel Knights is <laughs> kind of like Max, but less extreme. Okay, let's let's not have you explain <laughs> Marvel Knights at all. No, I can't. <laughs> uh, Marvel Knights was when the Event Comics, which was ran by Jimmy Palmiotti and Joe Quesada, uh, got control of four Marvel titles. They got control of Daredevil, oh. Black Panther, Punisher. And, oh, Lord, I'm forgetting the fourth one, but it doesn't matter. Um, and they were able to relaunch those four and have complete control. That's where the Kevin Smith Daredevil run happened. Um, and eventually the Marvel Knights expanded. And Marvel Knights is kind of what saved Marvel because the high sales, because Marvel was close to bankruptcy at the time. And I know Marvel Knights was something, a vehicle that they used to bring in some new creative teams. Yes, exactly. Uh, creators that have never worked on the titles before. And again, that's why Kevin Smith wrote the mm-hmm. first Daredevil run. And that is that is the start of Daredevil becoming this very popular, high-selling book. Which is uh, sad as he still enjoys to this very day. Yes, it's all because of Marvel Knights. Wow. So there you go. Now, The Punisher, of course, was one of these Marvel Knights. Uh, so the Punisher was relaunched in a mini series called The Punisher Purgatory from in November of 1998. Uh, it starred a supernatural Punisher who killed demons. Cool. 
uh, we find out that after prison, uh, Frank Castle went into an alleyway, put a gun up to his head, and committed suicide. And that's the end of the lesson on the Punisher. Thank all you right. all for listening. Good job. Yeah. Now, if you wouldn't like us to become supernatural avenging bounty hunters, you know, then you guys should head on over to patreon.com slash Jawin. That's, uh, if you didn't know, where you can support this podcast for any amount of month including the tiny amount of $1. $1. So head on over there if you like cool geek history lesson perks, and if you don't want Ashley to become a de- not demonic ghost hunter, although that would be kind of cool. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash Jawin is the only place that you can stop the demonic possession of both of the hosts and help support the show at the same time. Uh, all your support helps keep the Mind University running, and we appreciate all the things that you guys do over there. So Patreon.com slash Jawin. Every little bit helps. And now back to the Marvel Knights Punisher. Ooh. So in that miniseries, Purgatory, the third issue shows a flashback, and it shows the uh, an angel resurrecting Frank Castle from the dead to become a demon-killing agent of God. Now, just to let you know, this series is very forgettable. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So, uh, and let's just say that after that miniseries ended, uh, the Punisher kind of became a bit toxic because they introduced them in a couple things and it just didn't work and nobody thought that they could make the Punisher work. Mm. Kind of like what ha- happened to Hawkman, kind of like what happened to uh, Thor for a while. I would say um, that this happens to every comic book character mm-hmm. at least once in their career. Yes. And then you get some visionary or some young upstart with a different idea and then everything's okay again. Well, thank God Garth Ennis came along. Garth Ennis, the creator of Preacher, uh, Hitman, and other stories. Uh, he got the offer from Marvel Knights to write a 12-issue miniseries about the Punisher and it is entitled The Punisher, Welcome Back, Frank. Yes. Garth Ennis in the miniseries quickly writes off this the, the Purgatory miniseries by saying that Frank didn't care for his new status quo and told the angels that he quit. And he went back to <laughs> and he just went back to being an angry dude killing criminals. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> this is resolved in the first page Great. of Welcome Back Frank in, in a caption box. <laughs> hey God and God analogs, I'm out. The opening page of Welcome Back Frank is Frank standing on top of a, a skyscraper holding a guy above his head and, and he, I mean, he just says the thing of like, I didn't like it, I quit, I'm back to doing what I do best and then he tosses the guy over the roof. Nice. Um, and and uh, uh, sidebar, fun fact, uh, as many of our listeners know, I've worked in comic book stores my life, this is the easiest Punisher series to sell and the most requested one. Yep. Easily. Yes, I would say... I would say it is the best Punisher series. Cool. High praise. No no doubt. Um, so 12-issue miniseries, Garth Ennis, art by Steve Dillon, who can, uh, he wrote uh, Drew Preacher as well. Under the Marvel Knights imprint, this revived the po- uh, popularity of the character. Welcome back, Frank, is exactly the reason why we got the Thomas Jane movie, the one that happened in the, the mid-2000s. Because the Thomas Jane Punisher movie takes so many elements from Welcome Back, Frank. Oh really? Yes, it's it's all it's it's almost an adaptation, you know. The second act is anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and less Tom, John Travolta. Well, yeah, but Thomas right. Jane is also a really amazing casting mm-hmm. choice, so it's pretty cool. Now in Welcome Back, Frank, Frank reestablishes himself in New York City by taking out the Ganucci Crime Syndicate, and against his will, Frank actually gains three loyal friends for neighbors: Joan the Mouse. Mr. Bumpo, who's a big fat guy, and Spacker <laughs> Dave, who's a weird guy with a lot of, uh, he has a lot of uh, um, earrings in his face and just goes, Spacker Dave. Oh, weird. And he gets high a lot. Uh, he was playing by Ben Foster in the Punisher movie. Archangel? Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so all of them eventually actually help him in his crusade against the sure. Gnuchis. Now, after this miniseries, uh, it was so popular that Marvel launched an ongoing Marvel Knights series called The Punisher. It ran for 37 issues from August 2001 to February 2004, primarily by Ennis and Dylan. Uh, Dylan jumped out here and there. Uh, he didn't draw every issue. Uh, well, it's hard when you're an artist. Yep. It takes a long time. Now, that series ended and was immediately followed by a 2004 Punisher series that was under Marvel's mature reader's imprint, Max. Now, this series returned the character to his lone vigilante roots, and it focused on crime stories wrapped with black humor. Now, this was when the look of the Punisher was modified, removing the white gloves and the white boots, 
and just going for a traditional skull imprinted on a shirt with combat trousers, black combat boots, and a black trench coat. This is where the Tim Bradstreet covers happen. Yeah. I, oh, those are great covers. Yes. I guarantee you that there was a big marketing move behind that mm-hmm. too, where they were like, if we if we just make it a t-shirt, then we can print the t-shirt. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, the actual thing about it was is that Garth Ennis... Um, was getting tired of writing superhero stories. Mm -hmm. If you listen to a lot of Garth Ennis, Garth Ennis is not a huge fan of superheroes. He writes them here and there, but he's not a big fan of them. So he actually wanted to jump out of the series and Marvel, because Punisher was selling like gangbusters at the time, and Marvel didn't want to lose him. And they were like, what can we do to keep you on this book? And he said that he wanted to write a realistic, hard edge Frank Castle storyline with no superheroes. It's interesting because if you look at, I mean, as look again, it's just like black t-shirt, uh, dark jeans, but it's basically what every character in the boys is dressed like, mm-hmm. uh, which is another another well known Garth Ennis story. Yes. Uh, so the in this thing, I think Garth Ennis did something that I think was so great. Okay. And something you don't see in Marvel, he made it explicit in the Punisher Max series. That Frank Castle's timeline was fixed. That That's Marvel's so anti that. <laughs> yes. So Vietnam always happens for the Punisher. Mm. So the Punisher was old enough to go to Vietnam. So adjust them up to the 2000s and he's 50, 60 years old. Oh, this is old Punisher. This is old Punisher. Yes. Um, so... Because Marvel constantly always adjusts, you know, like Iron Man originally was Korea, then it was Vietnam, now it's Afghanistan. Uh, Johnny Storm and Reed Richards meeting is kind of the same thing. Well, uh, Frank, uh, uh, Reed Richards and Ben Grimm originally oh, fought my, in World yeah, War II. Yeah, my mistake. So there you go. Um, and actually, fun, th- fun fact, uh, promotional art for The Punisher, uh, number 44, gives Frank's birth date as February 16th, 1950. 1950. Yeah, so he's easily in his 60s now, if you go by that timeline. Yeah, like late yep. 60s. <laughs> uh, now, this imprint, the Punisher Max series, and by the way, another great series. It's really solid. Uh, shows the Punisher has been active for over 30 years. Um, and in Punisher uh, number 19, Punisher Max number 19, it specifies that he's killed approximately 2,000 people. <laughs> no yeah. big deal. Now, while traditional Punisher stories, of course, remain in the United States and had antagonists uh, and featured domestic crime, Max Punisher stories focused on current events. They went from corporate fraud to sexual slavery to the war on terror. Uh, many characters are past or current intelligence figures from like the CIA, the KGB, the SIS. Uh, he fought against the IRA, and he even had a storyline that involved the Yugoslav wars. Wow. Now, if you are okay with extreme violence. These are extremely violent. People cuss. There are sexual situations in them. But if the Punishers always kind of seem silly to you because you're like, I don't get this guy working with superheroes, I would say read Punisher Max. That's the series that will ground him for you? Yes. Because it is about like a very angry Vietnam soldier that just will kill anybody that commits any wrongs. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, it was also during this timeline, of course, the, the this time that the Punisher Born miniseries that I talked about early uh, happened. Mm-hmm. That's, this is when Grant Garth Ennis did that. Um, and to, to let you know, the opening arc of the Punisher, the Ma- Max series by Garth Ennis, opens with the Punisher finding out Microchip, remember him? The yes. guy who built his combat van? Finding out that Microchip, Microchip betrayed him. And is now working for the CIA. Microchip. And spoilers and giving it away. It, of course, ends with Frank killing Microchip. Right. Uh, which actually, like, for me, as like a 90s, like just, like a guy who has read some of the 90s Punishers, was quite a moment. It with got you? Seeing Frank kill Microchip. Wow. Yeah. Because I always figured that would be the one guy he wouldn't kill. By He'd the way, be like his Alfred. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Microchip played by Newman from Seinfeld in uh, the Ray Wise movie. Oh, really? Yep, yeah, that's go. awesome. Um, that's like perfect casting. Now, just know, again, like I said, this series is about Frank Castle taking down real world, cook, real world crooks. And in my opinion, it's the best Punisher run that has ever been written. Cool. Um, now, interestingly enough, at this time, when the Punisher moved over to the Max series and he was in there for 60 issues, he was not used in the regular Marvel continuity out of respect to Garth Ennis. Wow. Yes. It must be nice to have that much clout. <laughs> so the Punisher disappeared from Marvel continuity for five years. So he's, he's not in any Avengers storylines. He's not in any event crossover. Until... <gasps> Civil War. Well, everyone's at Civil War. Ashley, explain Civil War. So, the government 
this thing happens and the government's like, hero three sentences. should register. Sentence number one. Okay. Sentence number two. Um, Iron Man's like, yo, I totally register, comma. Captain America's like, yo, I'm totally not going to register, period. Sentence two. They fight. Gotcha. Now, again, this is the costume superhero Punisher. So he has his long sleeves and his long black pants. Yeah. Okay? Now, initially, Frank Castle didn't give a damn about the civil war between the heroes. It's surprising no one. Yep. <laughs> Until he saw that the government created their Thunderbolts team and was using superpowered criminals to enforce the law. Mm-hmm. And this was the act that made Frank Castle be like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and he joined he joined the side of Captain America and the Secret Avengers against the registration. Uh, Frank Castle is the one who rescued Spider-Man from the pro registration forces after he'd been beaten and uh, beaten unconscious by, uh, you know, uh, Spider-Man tried to escape. Yeah. Well being, Punisher's the one who rescued him, which I think is interesting knowing their history. That'd be interesting if they do that in the movie. Oh, that would be interesting. Uh, I doubt it. Uh, some, <laughs> I, do, I do too, but it'd be cool to see. Some heroes were apprehensive about having the vigilante in their midst, while some were outraged not wanting him there at all, whereas he was the only one that could ensure them because they needed to get into the Baxter building. That's right. And Frank Castle was the one that knew how to get into the Baxter building, and Captain America eventually allowed him to, to join. Um, unfortunately, on the eve of the final battle, two supervillains attempted to join the anti-registration forces, the Captain America's team, mm-hmm. and Punisher shot them in the head in front of everybody. Yep. <laughs> and Captain America was so enraged that he attacked Castle for his lack of self-control and for not wanting to be a better man. Um, after Civil War, they launched a new in Marvel continuity Punisher series called Punisher War Journal uh, in the regular Marvel Universe and was written by Matt Fraction. And it's the one where Frank Castle gets a really stupid stupidly designed Captain America costume. It's basically a ca- oh, yeah. it's basically a Captain America costume with a skull on it, and it was terrible. Go Google it. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> then the Punisher took on Norman Osborn because he didn't like that Norman Osborn was the head of Hammer. Um, and that happened because of Secret Invasion. Ashley, would you please explain Secret Invasion? So throughout Marvel Comics history, there's been all these heroes. Secret Invasion is when the Skrulls um, come to Earth, and over the course of that storyline, they reveal that several heroes that we thought were heroes all along were not. They were taken over by Skrulls. They murder all the Skrulls. All their actual human forms come back. This is a way to bring back dead characters. Yep. And after the Skrull invasion, Norman Osborn became the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he renamed it Hammer. And Frank attempted to shoot Norman, but the superhero, the Sentry, stopped him, and Sentry began to fight Frank. Frank escaped. Norman hired the criminal called the Hood to take out Frank Castle, but he failed as well because the t- the Punisher is really tough to kill and a badass. Remember? Yeah, evidently. Yep. Soon after that, Osborne dispatched Dakin and dozens of Hammer agents to kill Frank. Who is Dakin? Dakin is the character of questionable sexual orientation who is the son of Wolverine. Yes. The evil Wolverine, as you could say. Yeah. Y- yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When Frank and Dakin fought one-on-one, Dakin emerged victorious, slicing Frank to pieces. Now, those pieces were then recovered by the Moloids and the Man-Thing. And in one of the ridiculous storylines of Marvel history, we now have Frank Castle turned into Frankencastle. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, remember this storyline. <laughs> yeah. After this death at the it. after his death at the hands of Dakin, Castle was resurrected by Morbius and the Legion of Monsters as a patchwork Frankenstein-like creature to help him against a group of samurai-like men led by the mysterious Hell's Guard who killed monsters for not being of God. At first, Frank refused to help them out and just ran into the sewers. Uh, Marvel, I need to know who greenlit this. <laughs> uh, Rick Remender. <laughs> after he refused, the group attacked the monsters' hideout, and Frank was angered by the death of a child child Moloid and fought back and of course after intense violent battles with the Legion of Monsters against the Hell's Guard um, Frank and Castle would eventually take his revenge against Dakin in Tokyo but it was interrupted by Wolverine and at the conclusion of this series the character was transformed back into a normal human through magical means amazing yep yep uh, and then we get a pretty good run of the Greg Rucka Punisher series. Yay! Now, a violent gang war in the series resulted in the murders of nearly 30 people at a wedding chapel, including the groom, leaving the bride, Marine Sergeant Rachel Cole Alves, a widow, just hours after being married. Aww. Now, Frank had connections to one of the detectives of the case and used the information that the detective gave him to kill members of the exchange, which was the terrorist group responsible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank journeyed to upstate New York to kill several exchange members, and there he encountered Rachel, who was using her Marine background to get revenge on the exchange. And since they both wanted the same thing, the two began to work together, and she sort of became a female Punisher. Weird. 
Uh, of course, this is the run where you see like Frank is always bandaged up and he has a beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is why Greg Greg Whitehall really wanted him to always seem like he was being hurt. He wanted him to have a beard. Yes. So uh, eventually, Frank Castle learned that Daredevil was in possession of the Omega Drive. This was in uh, Mark Wade's run. And this is a data drive made of unstable molecules that contained uh, basically all the organization about crime organizations. Frank wanted them for himself. Daredevil didn't. Uh, but Frank agreed to help Daredevil destroy it. However, Rachel knew that there was information about the exchange off it, and she stole it from Daredevil before Daredevil could, inst- could ex- destroy it. What? And uh, Rachel ran off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Into the night. Yep. Angry that she let her emotions dictate her actions, Frank confronts Rachel and has her prove her loyalty to the mission on crime by making her burn her wedding photo. Oh, that's yeah. so mean. Yeah, it's pretty mean. Uh, Rachel then confronted Stephanie Gerard, who is the leader of the exchange, and in a heavily protected office, while Frank shot his way through the window using bullets tipped with adamantium to destroy bullet tip- bulletproof glass, which I think is kind of cool. It is cool. Uh, the confusion of Frank entering gave Rachel the chance to kill Gerard. Uh, they, of course, uh, stopped the exchange, and their actions resulted in the deaths of... Uh, the accidental deaths of three cops, whose deaths, of course, were blamed on the Punisher. Uh, the duo split up. But Rachel, accidentally having killed one of the cops in an accident, wanted to end her life of guilt and turned herself in. Um, when the news reached Spider-Man, he asked the Avengers for help in bringing the Punisher in because he knew that Rachel was innocent as actually Frank Castle. Mm. Uh, so Frank Castle was out in the country and the Avengers sent Black Widow to pursue Frank around the globe. But Frank Castle was able to slip away from her every single time. She could never catch him. Uh, eventually they sent they, they sent Thor. And <laughs> Thor soon found him and convinced Frank Castle to retur- return to New York and help save Rachel from the death penalty, which is what she had gotten in her trial. Mm-hmm. But instead of turning himself in, he freed Rachel. Uh, without anybody knowing. Of course, the Avengers did not anticipate his actions, and the Punisher was able to to buy enough time by distracting the Avengers to allow Rachel to escape. Okay. Um, and as a result, he was captured by the Avengers and placed in a special cell designed by Iron Man uh, that kept him separated from other prisoners in case he wanted to kill any of them. Right, because he'll kill anyone. Yep. And then this is where he briefly joined General Ross's Thunderbolts, the, the completely villain team. Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, he got tired of that, and he started killing his other teammate members, starting with the Hulk villain, the leader, because mm-hmm. the Punisher was like, I just can't stand this. <laughs> and then we get to the most recent Secret Wars, which is basically about the Earths uh, hitting each other, and nobody really knows what happens. Yeah. So as Earth-616, which is the main Marvel Universe, was coming to to an end in the final incursion, basically two planets colliding with each other, the Punisher crashes the Kingpin's revelry party about, yay, the end of the world, and he kills every supervillain present at that party. Cool. That's a good time for the yep. Punisher. Frank is then approached by the Howling Commandos, who want his aid in destroying the terrorist group the Black Dawn, who had been filming themselves executing American hostages, including a former member uh, associate of Frank's. Mm. Frank agrees to help them and is airlifted to Crete, where he destroys the terrorist group, but he dies from wounds in the battle as the earth is destroyed by the incursion and that's the last that he has seen in the main 616 universe wow so and real quick uh, let's talk about some fun facts Frank uses rubber mercy bullets when guest starring in other comics most notably Daredevil (laughs) Spider-Man and Captain America in the 1970s 80s they specifically mention that fact Interesting. He used to have a pet Rottweiler named Max, who he Aww. saved from animal poachers. And the Punisher used to have a pet coyote named Loot, who he saved from gang members. Loot! <laughs> <laughs> so Punisher is a softy at He's art. got a soft spot for animals. Uh, he also made, uh, in other media, the Punisher made three appearances on the 1990s Spider-Man animated series, jo- voiced by John Beck. The Punisher also appeared on other 90s cartoons, including the X-Men, Iron Man, and he also shows up in Earth's Event, the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which I think is the best Avengers cartoon. Mm-hmm. And there have been three Punisher movies. Dolph Lundgren appeared as the Punisher in The Punisher in 1989, portraying Frank Castle for the first feature length film. Uh, Frank Castle, the Punisher, was also portrayed by actor Thomas Jane in The Punisher in 2004. That's the one that takes from Welcome Back, Frank. And originally intended to be a sequel to the 2004 movie, there was a reboot titled Punisher Warzone in 2008 that featured Ray Stevenson as Frank Castle, and it was directed by Lexi Alexander. And of course, as we know, Netflix, Daredevil Season 2, John Berthenol, Berth. Berthal. Bernthal? Berenthal? Bernthal. Bernthal. Let's go with Bernthal. Barrowman. Well, he will play uh, Frank Castle Punisher in the second season of Daredevil set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Cool. And now let's move on to the recommended reading. Where we recommend that you read stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, so as you know, uh, you can find all these recommended readings at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. And it will take you to Amazon and you can buy these books that I'm talking about. And a little piece of your purchase will come back to help the Mayan University. Woo. Uh, point of note, most of these aren't kid-friendly books. So, <laughs> uh, number one choice if you're going to read anything Punisher is the Welcome Back Frank miniseries. It's a yeah. 12 issue miniseries. This is what got me into Punisher. You said this is what you recommend if anybody says, hey, I want to read Punisher. Absolutely. You don't need to know anything going in, and it's a great quality story. Uh, My second choice would be they just released a Punisher Max Complete Collection that collects uh, Punisher Born 1 through 4, Mm -hmm. and it has uh, the first 12 issues of the Punisher Max series. Nice. Which I think is a great deal, uh, because Punisher Born is amazing, I I think. I own Punisher Born myself. I don't own any of the Max stuff, so that's cool. I might actually get this. It's kind of cool. Cool. There's also a new volume called Punisher Black and White. This is the Nathan Edmondson and Mitch Gerard's run. Now, the reason why I suggest this is because it's it's probably his his most recent run, and it's interesting because it sends Frank to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of takes him out of his... uh, uh, it's interesting to see him anywhere that's not New York. And number four is the Punisher run by Greg Rucka, which I talked about. But sadly, you can only get it on Comicsology or Kindle. But it's such a great run that I would highly recommend it. If, I know some of you might be like, oh, I need a physical copy. But still, head over to Comicsology. Yeah, for sure. Let's move on to the teaching tweet, Ashley. Okay. The teaching tweet is where in 140 characters or less, uh, Jason's going to sum up what he just taught us. Here we go. Frank Castle is not a superhero. He's a soldier, a soldier whose war will never end because his wife can never hug him again. <laughs> there you go. You're a poet. You don't even know it. <laughs> there you go. And that completes our lesson about the Punisher. Ashley, how do you feel? How does your how does your one woman war on crime going to be now that you know everything about the Punisher? I got to step up on punishing quota. That's for sure. <laughs> that's for damn sure. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget that if you want to listen to other episodes like the Nick Fury episode that we name dropped several times, mm-hmm. you can go and find all our past episodes on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Geek History Lesson. And if you do us a favor, go over there and leave us a rating on iTunes because it lets other listeners find the show just like you. It helps bump us in the search and it, and it helps. It makes a difference. It does. Go, you know, please go do that before we find you in our one, one man war, one man war and one woman war on crime. Yes. Yeah. Also, if you want to suggest uh, future topics, just like Bose and Bub and uh, <laughs> Jonathan Stomas, you can do that where, Ashley? Well, you can do that at geekhistorylesson.com or facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson. All the modes of communication for those appropriate pages are open. Yes. And don't forget, uh, patreon.com slash Jawan. There will be a Geek History Lesson extra episode coming soon. Well, we will have a discussion about who we think the Punisher can beat in a fight. Ooh. So there you go. Thanks for listening. If you want to talk to us about the Punisher on Twitter, you can do that at Jawan for me and at Ashley V. Robinson for Ashley. I'm Jason, black t-shirt wearing white boots, white gloves, Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson and Professor Jason. Why don't you dismiss us so we can go and launch our own one person wars? I like black shirts. I like black pants. But white gloves and white boots is the only way you can see the blood of the criminals that you kill in my one man war on crime. Class is dismissed before I shoot you.